This fly is a uh, awesome still water lure. I mean, just ridiculously good. Um, it's called the Mickreed, and the story behind it, if you believe it, it's quite a tall story actually. But um, years ago, Phil Dixon got a guy to tie him up. It's either a cart's whisker or a tequila. I can't really remember. But the boy was colour blind. <laughs> so he tied this, obviously with the wrong colours. Completely wrong colours. However, it's a devastatingly effective fly. Um, this is the one. So this is one tied by Phil's dad, Martin. Um, and we were using that on still waters in the Euros over in Czech Republic. It's like a small stocky water and it proved to be effective. It wasn't the most effective fly but it's effective enough. But um, it gets fished a lot here in the UK. There's a similar fly in Scotland called the, the Ali McCoist. Um, it's got a red bead but let's just go ahead and tie this one. So the first thing I'll do is, because I'm tying with a lot of frets, I like something with a wide gape. So I'm using this streamer hook, 900BL, it's a size 10. And I've also got some um, beads here, this is a, a 3mm bead. Copper, I prefer this in copper to any other colour. Don't ask me why, it's just the one that I like. So I'll keep the fly in the, the vice while I, I just stick this um, bead on the hook. So countersunk bead and then just stick that in the hook. Like so. Spilling hooks everywhere. So just get this in the vise. Uh, lock everything up nice and tight. Black thread, 8010 or whatever. Doesn't really matter because it's not, we're doing, not doing super neat heads, it's a Fritz body. so. Just come in, wind on your bed of tying thread there. Okay, and then we've got some black marabou. This one's Dave Downey's. Um, I also like uh, there's one comp candy stuff's nice as well. But basically, this stuff it doesn't get any dye in your fingers, and I like that. Now, this is a bulky fly, so I'm taking a, a really big lump of uh, marabou there. I'm just gonna spin that in my fingers. And I've got these stub ends, I'm just going to snip these away. And I'm a neat freak, so I'm not going to snip them on the, the table. So come in with your butted ends up against the bead. And this just makes for a nice even body. Nice tight thread wraps. Tidy this bit up a little bit. Nice neat thread wraps, like so. Tail. Long and short as you want it, I quite like a long tail. That's just out of shot there. But you can see by doing it with your, your fingertips, you're gonna get a straight cut edge. It's a nice edge on that, so. And also, because it's a lure, what I tend to do is I lift it and bring the thread behind a couple of times. And all that does is it stops it getting wrapped around the hook shank, um, which can often happen. So the original wasn't tied to this, a different olive flitz, however, the one that I've seen Martin tying was using this dark olive F and F. So that's what I'll be using. And what I do is I've got a little bit of water here. And I just rather than dunking the flitz in the water, I just with my thumb and forefinger, I just wet it. I just find it a lot it doesn't get soaked. And all I'll do is I'll expose the core here, so I take some fibres away and expose the core. I'll secure that on my side of the hook shank. Okay. Water will be wet now. So with all fritzies, if you can, when you're winding, stroke the fibres back as it butts up against the, the, the previous. So you just keep stroking it back as you go. If you feel it's going to move, just come in with your thumb and forefinger and just pull it back like you would a hackle. But nice neat touching turns. When it's wet, you'll get more turns on. It's that simple. And we want a bit of bulk on this. So we're getting to an area. You want this right up, up against the bead. So you can see that's trying to move there. A little bit more moisture on it. Stroke it back like it was a hackle. And then 
I'm coming. I give myself, I'll, I'll, I take it to 90 degrees. So I take it straight on there and the thread 90 degrees to lock over. A couple of wraps. Because I'm using frets, I prefer my craft knife, which come in, just touch that to the core. That's him. Everything's very, very neat and tidy. Couple of wraps there at the bead. And then what I like to do is, um, while it's still wet, is I take my varnish and I tap some on the thread. It just makes things a lot easier. And this is my, this one's for whip finishing with varnish on the thread, so it's a bit claggy. Keep your good whip finishing too for nice neat little flies. And then just a couple of thread drops there to lock everything in with your whip finish. And that is the McCreed. Or certainly the way I always show it to tie the McCreed. Um, so there's an, uh, another one that I did. And this one. So those are, those are both exactly the same. And this one was uh, the one Martin tied. So as you can see, McCreed, a devastating lure. Um, and one that's just phenomenal on um, small still waters and reservoirs. Um, so give it a bash. I'm sure you're going to be disappointed.